All right, in the last tutorial, we went over the basic interface of 3D Coat. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to get started in the voxel sculpt room. So in order to really get started and to explain some of the basics of sculpting workflows in 3D Coat, we first need something to actually sculpt on. So you'll see that we have an entirely empty scene. Now, if you want something, if I go to my voxel tools here on the left, and by the way, if you don't see this, make sure that it hasn't been uh, hidden. You might see nothing there. If you'll see this tiny little arrow on the right, on the left hand side, sorry, click on that and it'll come back. Now to get started, I'm just going to scroll down to the objects tab. I'm going to click on primitives and I'll explain this in more detail later. Just click on that and then hit enter. So now we actually have something to work with. So in the 3D view, the very first thing you need to know is how to navigate. So if you've ever used the 3D modeling and animation software Maya, this will come very naturally to you. If you left click and drag, you will orbit around your object. Now, this is left clicking and dragging in an empty space. If you left click and drag on the actual object, you will start to sculpt. But if you left click and drag in empty space, you will orbit around. If you right click and drag, you will zoom in and out. And if you middle click and drag, you will pan around. Now, if your cursor is on the object, you can still do this by just holding down the Alt key. So that'd be Alt and left click and dragging, Alt plus right click, and Alt and middle click for when you're actually on the object. This is actually necessary for some tools like the curves tool and the spikes tool. You'll need to hold down Alt even if you're not clicking on the object directly. All right, so now that we know how to navigate, let's talk about this object itself. Now with just about any brush base tool, so the grow, smooth, fill, whatever it is you're using, I'm going to stick with grow for now, it's just the very top one. You'll see you get this cursor wherever your mouse is. What this shows you is it shows you several things. It'll show you the alpha that you're using. So if I go to my alphas panel right here, and if you don't see that, you can just look in for windows, pop-ups, and look for alphas right there. I can click on a different one of these, like say this little rocky looking one, and you'll see that the uh, cursor changes to reflect the alpha I've selected. I'm going to leave it for the default, just the very first one. Now, that's the first piece of information this cursor tells you. The next thing it tells you is it also tells you the strength and the radius of the brush. If you right click and drag while on the object, if you right click and drag to the left and the right, your cursor will get bigger and smaller. So that's left and right. If you right click and drag up and down, that will change the strength. So that red line will tell you how strong it is. So if I go very, very light, and then left click and drag to sculpt. So you see that red line is very low, not a whole lot happening. If I make it really, really crazily strong, then you'll, well, as you see, it becomes very powerful. Much more intense results. Now one important uh, feature of 3D Coat that I'm just going to quickly explain now is how the sculpting actually works because 3D Coat uses voxels primarily for its sculpting. Now what's, what does that mean? How do we apply this? Well, what it means is that if I hit W on my keyboard, you'll see the wireframe of your model. Now you see that these polygons are evenly distributed. If I sculpt, you'll see, let me decrease the strength a little bit, you'll see that new polygons are actually being created. And even if I keep sculpting this, bring up the strength, and I bring it way out there, there's no polygonal stretching. 
because what we're actually doing is we're filling up voxels and then having a new mesh wrapped around those voxels. If that sounds a little complicated to you, don't worry. All you need to know is that it means that you are never restricted by polygonal stretching or topology. That means that I can just keep on sculpting this, keep on adding to it, and the triangles, the polygons, the vertices, they'll never stretch. The polygon distribution will always be perfectly even. Now this is a double-edged sword though, because this also means that you can't have any one area that has more detail than any other. But it does, that's what the uh, surface sculpting mode is for. But it does mean that you can have a very high degree of freedom with your sculpting when you're creating your base shape. I can go and I can grab this section and I can pull it out and as you see new polygons are created after the sculpt has been finished. Allowing me to then sculpt on top of the newly created region. And then just hit W again to get back to shaded mode. So those are the basics of the voxel sculpt room. Not a whole lot to it. I'll start uh, discussing some of the So those are the basics of the sculpting room. Right now. So those are the basics of understanding voxels and oh fuck. Those are the overall basics of um, sculpting in 3D code and just working your way around a 3D object and understanding how the voxels will behave as you're sculpting. Now before I go into the actual individual tools, I'm going to be talking about a few other features about working in 3D code in general, and then we'll move on to going down this list of tools.